Hey everyone, so as some of you may know by now, I'm a pretty big model train person and I figured it'd be kind of cool to show how I've implemented 3D printing into some of my various model train projects. So let me take you along on building a new cab for my little box cab. So some of the things that I've used 3D printing for in model railroading include making actual loads. You may recognize this from the rusting protopasta magnetic iron video that I did. I also made the underframe from the same material. The rest of it is commercially available wood and little trucks, but came in handy being able to 3D print an underframe for it. Same story for this gondola here. The top part is literally just strip wood from a hobby store and then we have the commercial trucks and couplers and the rest is strip wood but a lot of people are amazed that I actually used a 3D printed underframe on it and it actually works quite well. I have a little bit of a weight issue to figure out with it but that's something I got to figure out. Another crowd favorite is this little guy. It's a custom... We got to put Walt in the shot. So another crowd favorite at shows is this little locomotive right here, which I designed up in my spare time in Fusion 360, and then all the upper body components, the ones that are kind of a reddish brown color, were all done by my friend Lance over at NURBS. He's a 3D hub slash private 3D printing service that has a Stratasys, I believe it is, no it's in has one of those object polyjet machines that can do incredible 3D printing details. So he actually did all the 3D printing work on the upper part of this and the bottom part is custom printed by me in Protopasta's magnetic iron filament to add some density to the underframe. But everybody at train shows is amazed that quite literally everything on this is 3D printed and it looks very good for what it is. It's not the world's most powerful locomotive, but it looks cool, so who cares? Plus, in the real world, locomotives like these rarely pulled more than like two or three rail cars anyways. But here we are with the main project, which is this. It's a simple little box cab locomotive frame that I 3D printed in regular PLA plastic a while ago for a model train show so I could stuff some radio controlled electronics in because the layout that we were on was having electrical issues like crazy and for day two of the show I'm like we got to have something running so I'll radio control one of my locomotives. Very quickly slapped together the body, stuck it on there, but I figured it's time that I actually come along and make something that looks a little bit nicer. So what I've done is I've come along and re-3D printed all the components. This time they're flat, which is the same as that one, but they're also done in Protopasta's magnetic iron. The main reason why I printed these in protopasta's magnetic iron is because, let's face it, nothing looks better for real rust than real rust. And the same goes for real looking wood, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and just quickly sand these components to make sure that everything is somewhat cleaned up as the filament roll that I have here accidentally never got put back and is set out for like about a month or so, so it is really wet and it's going to go back into storage when I get done filming. But the parts have a couple more, let's just say, blemishes than normal parts were, but it's not the end of the world. It is a narrow gauge locomotive and short line railroads, regardless of their track gauge, never took the best care of their equipment. So I'm going to kind of play that into the model, but I still want it to look a little decent. So let me go ahead sand these guys up off camera, then I'm gonna come along and discuss how we're gonna weather them, go down and paint them, and then assemble the whole thing. Okay, so just like in the other resting video, what I've done is I've sanded and then wire brushed the parts, partly to make sure the edges are square and partly to rough the surface up so that way the iron particles get exposed. So when I come along and apply the rubber cement and then paint the parts and remove the rubber cement, the acid fumes have somewhere to attack and give it the rusting effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a while, let the glue get a little bit more tacky, then I'm going to come along and spray paint the parts and then we'll discuss what we're going to do from there. Okay, so I'm back. I decided to paint the inside of the model flat black 
the outside of the model gray just so it's easier to show up and also because I don't like looking at models that don't have an interior that look like crap. So that's that. To join the parts I am using this Plastistruct plastic weld and I know there's going to be so many people out there going well that doesn't work on PLA and it actually will work decently well on PLA. The trick is you just need to slightly sand the surfaces, rub it onto both of them, and then while they're still wet and tacky, press them together. In my case here, I'm just using two aluminum blocks to form a little gluing jig. So let me go ahead and glue all these parts together and then I'll check back in with you guys. A little helpful tip when gluing. I'm on the third out of fourth glue joint. What I've done is I've applied the glue only to this joint. I'm waiting until it cures so I can do the last one. That way in case there's any inaccuracies in the fit, I can very easily deal with it. Okay, so I now have the glue doing its magic. I've set a bottle on the top just for some support. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for about an hour or two and then I'm going to come back and discuss filling in any little gaps which probably will be there. It's just a fact of modeling life and then we'll kind of figure out what we're going to do from there. So see you guys in a little bit. While the plastic weld is a really good material for gluing everything, it also kind of takes a while to <clears throat> fully evaporate from the PLA, especially because it is painted. And I wanted to make sure that my corner joints are very strong, so once I got the model tacked together with that, I came along and used a little bit of medium viscosity super glue, and then I just hit it with a tiny bit of the kicker accelerant. Be careful with this stuff because it makes the CA glue get really really hot and that can obviously be a bad thing on 3D printed models. That said, I also came along, as you can probably notice, and applied a little bit of squadron putty. In this case, I just used the green so it would, whoops, sorry, well, I just used the green so it would show up on camera that I did that. Obviously, there's areas that might not be perfect, but it, it helps fill them in a little bit. So I'm going to conclude the episode here. And then next time we're going to pick it up with me giving it the final paint coat, covering weathering it, and actually installing it on the model. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Make It With Calvin. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff that everybody says at the end. And I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.